See, people who are constantly offended at others, constantly criticizing others, always judging other people, these are people not focused on their sin. They're focused on everybody else's sins. This, oh, by the way, is why the church is losing ground in North America. We have been rightly labeled by people outside the church as intolerant, judgmental, right, uh, unloving. Now, I'm not talking about standing up for biblical truths. I'm talking about this attitude that says we are better. You're bad. We're good. You're the bad guys. We're the good. All that, that is what James is saying is the character, is the disposition, is the posture of people who are not repenting, who are not mourning over their sin, who have not and are not surrendering to God on a moment-by-moment -moment basis. People who are uber-critical, who are chronically judgmental, who are consistently negative, are not repenting people. You know anybody like that? Not very attractive, are they? I'm not talking about their looks. I'm talking about their character. This is why people are voting with their feet, friends, and not coming to our church because they perceive, and sometimes rightly so, in us this ugly, critical, negative, judgmental attitude that is squarely focused not on our sin, but on other people's sin. This is what Jesus was talking about, right? The most famous verse in, in, in America right now. For sure, maybe the world, but for sure America. Matthew 7, 1, judge not lest you be judged. And so people say, well, you can't judge me. And Jesus is like, no, 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 no. You can judge, but you should, you should not, unless you want to sin, self-righteously judge. It's okay to judge. Take the splinter. You know, if you're going to take the splinter out of your brother's eye, take the log out of your eye. In other words, deal with your sin first, then deal with the sin of other people. So it's not that we don't judge. It's not that we don't, you know, say what the Bible says. It's that we have dealt with our sin, which brings humility, which brings a posture of submission to God. And so when we do go pick a splinter out of our brother's eye, we don't poke him in the eye. We don't blind them. We don't harm them other than, other than just dealing with their sin. See, this is what James is talking about. Now, let me tell you what I'm not saying. I'm not saying that you should repent so that God will continue to bless you and answer your prayers. That is the reason that Christians are judgmental and negative is because their repentance is, is selfish. It's about them, right? It's about them avoiding God's punishment because they misunderstand the gospel. And it's self-righteous in that if I punish myself enough, if I'm miserable enough, then God will surely bless me. No, no, no. Gospel repentance is not repenting to get things from God. It's repenting to get God. It's, 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 it's repenting in order to see God better, to to feel his affirmation. Because why? He was punished for you. You're not, you're not somehow punishing yourself. And you're not making yourself more righteous the worse you feel. No, his righteousness was credited to your account because of what Jesus has done. We repent not to, to get, you know, a relationship with God as a Christian. We repent to restore our relationship with God as Christians. Repentance makes us solid. It makes us humble. It makes us usable. 